Shalom, beloved. A word. May the Most High bless and anoint this message. And may all who have ears hear what the Spirit says to his anointed. As we go forth receiving encouragement and strength from the Spirit of the Most High, let his living waters come upon us and let us sit at his table, sheep of his pasture, as he feeds us in truth and in spirit. And may we always praise El Elyon, the Almighty, and honor his holy word, Yeshua HaMashiach, and give praise and glory unto the Ruach HaKadosh, his Holy Spirit, thanking him for all that he has, is, and shall do, and letting eternity break into the now, that it cover and keep us, guide us who seek the truth, and bless us in wisdom, understanding, prudence, discernment, and self-control as we honor the Most High. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you. Amen. We are in the book of Enoch, beloved. Some books call it chapter 97. Some books call it chapter 96. I'm reading it as though it's from chapter 96. But if your chapters vary, don't worry. The word is true, even if the enumeration differs. This is a word to the saints as well as the sinners. And do not be afraid, you who have suffered, for you will receive healing and a bright light will shine upon you and the voice of rest you will hear from heaven. Woe to you sinners, for your riches make you appear righteous. There are many who walk the earth and dress in fine clothes, beloved. They wear robes and sit on so-called thrones of judgment. Yes, but their hearts prove them to be sinners. And this word will be a testimony against them as a reminder of their evil deeds. Woe to you who devour the finest of wheat and drink the best of the water and trample upon the humble through your power. Woe to you who drink water all the time for you will quickly be repaid and will become exhausted and dry for you have left the spring of life. Yes, beloved, we have come to that glorious fountain that fountain of the water of life. We are down to verse eight. Woe to you powerful, who through power oppress the righteous, for the day of your destruction will come. And now beloved, we are going to go down to chapter 97 as we see the book continues. We are starting at the first verse. Believe you righteous, believe beloved, believe that the sinners will become an object of shame and will be destroyed on the day of judgment. Be it known to you sinners that the most high remembers your destruction and that the angels rejoice over your destruction. What will you do sinners and where will you flee on the day of judgment when you hear the sound of the prayer of the righteous? Yes, beloved, the prayer of the righteous for all the evil that has been committed against them and upon the earth and against others in iniquity, those prayers what prayers, beloved? We will go into the book of Revelations, chapter six, starting at the ninth verse. And when he had opened the fifth seal, the Lamb of the Most High, the word of Yah, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Yah and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, 
How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our earth blood on them that dwell on the earth? Yes, beloved, it is backing up what it says in the book of Enoch. What will you do, you sinners? And where will you flee on that day of judgment when you hear the sound of prayer of the righteous? When they come before their judgment, those prayers, your prayers, our prayers, the prayers of the righteous that are before the throne of God will accuse them of all that they have done. Yes, beloved, the book of Revelations backing up what the book of Enoch is saying, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Yes, yes. Mm. What will you do, you sinners? And where will you flee on that day of judgment when you hear the prayer of the righteous? But you will be not, but you will not be like them against whom this word will be a testimony. You have been associated with sinners. And in those days, the prayer of the holy will be in front of the Lord. And for you will come a day of your judgment. Yes, in those days, the prayer of the holy will be in front of the Lord. Again, we're going back to the book of Revelations chapter 6. And when he opened the fifth seal and I saw under the altar, the souls of them that were slain for the word of Yah and for the testimony which they held, they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest for yet a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Yes, beloved, the prayers of the righteous before the throne of the Most High testify against the sinners. And now we will go back to the book of Enoch. We're going to verse six. And the words of your iniquity will be read out before the great and holy one. And your faces will be blushed with shame and every deed which is founded upon iniquity will be rejected. Yes, yes. Woe to you sinners who are in the middle of the sea or on dry ground. Their memory will be harmful to you. Yes, yes. What does that mean? Woe to you sinners who are in the middle of the sea or on dry ground. Their memory will be harmful to you. Every deed that they have done will be based on a crime, on a crime, beloved. And you see, when we read Woe to you sinners who are in the middle of the sea or on dry ground. Their memory will be harmful to you. There are those who do their crimes and hide them in the waters, be it through bodies they throw there, through the instruments of crime that they hide in the waters, in the sea. Some on dry ground. You see, even the earth will disclose the blood they have shed. It will testify against them, beloved. There are those who have buried many a body in the waters, thinking they would rise no more to tell who has committed the evil against them. Many have hid bodies and instruments of crime in the earth, but all of it will testify against them. We will go on, beloved. I'm not going to read it all. 
there are certain parts. We're going into the book of Enoch. We're going to chapter 100. And there is a lot here to read, but I don't want to continue too long. And in those days and in one place, fathers and sons will strike one another and brothers will together fall in death until their blood flows as if it were a stream. This is when the judgment comes. As a matter of fact, forgive me, forgive me. We are gonna go back. We are going to start at chapter 99. Verse 12, woe to you who lay foundations in sin and deceit and who cause bitterness on the earth. For because of this, an end will be made of them. Woe to you who build your houses with the toil of others. In all their building materials are the sticks and stones of sin. I say to you, you will not have peace. Woe to those who reject the measure and the internal inheritance of their father and cause their souls to follow error, for they will not have rest. Woe to those who commit iniquity and help wrong and kill their neighbors until the day of the great judgment, for he will throw down your glory. And you put evil into your hearts and rouse the spirit of his anger so that he may destroy you all with the sword. And all the righteous and holy will remember your sin. They are those who think their sins are covered. And because they don't suffer recompense on this side of eternity, that they will not be found out on the other. I'm going into chapter 100. I'm starting at the second verse. For a man will not in mercy withhold his hand from his sons, nor from his son's sons in order to kill them. And the sinner will not withhold his hand from his honored brother from dawn until the sun sets, they will kill one another. And the horse will walk up to its chest in the blood of sinners and the chariot will sink in its height. And in those days, the angels will come down into the hidden places and gather together in one place all those who have helped sin. And the Most High will rise on that day and execute the great judgment on all the sinners. Yes, beloved. And he will say God from the holy angels over all the righteous and holy. And they will guard them like the apple of an eye until an end is made of all evil and sin. And even if righteousness sleep a long sleep, they have nothing to fear. And the wise men will see the truth and the sons of the earth will understand all the words of this book. And they will know that their riches will not be able to save them or overthrow their sin. Yes, beloved. I'm gonna move on. And this word is for the righteous. We're going into chapter 102, chapter 102, starting at the sixth verse. I have to make sure, yes. I'm gonna start at the fourth because the books, the setting of it, and some of the books do not line up, although the words are the same, the chapters and the verses differ depending on the book it's written from or the translation thereof, should I say. Do not be afraid, you souls of the righteous, and be hopeful, yes, let your spirit be anchored in the truth. You who have died in righteousness, yes, 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 do not be afraid you souls of the righteous. Be hopeful, you who have died in righteousness. And do not be sad that your souls have gone down into shoal in sadness and that your bodies did not obtain during your life a reward in accordance with your goodness. 
But when you die, the sinners will say about you, as we die, the righteous have also died. And what use to them were their deeds? Behold, like us, they've died in sadness and in darkness. And what advantage do they have over us? From now on, we are equal. And what will they receive and what will they see forever? For behold, they too have died. And from now on, they will never again see the light. And I say unto you, you sinners, you are content to eat and drink and strip men naked and to steal and sin and acquire possessions and see good days. But you saw the righteous, how their end was peace, for no wrong was found in them until the day of their death. But they were destroyed and became as though they had not been, and their souls went down to shoal in distress. And now I swear to you, the righteous, by his great glory and his honor, and by his magnificent sovereignty and by his majesty, I swear to you that I understand this mystery. And I've read the tables of heaven and seen the writing of the Holy One. I have found written and engraved in it and concerning them that all good and joy and honor have been made ready and written down for the spirits of those who died in righteousness. And much good will be given to you in recompense for your toil and that your lot will be more excellent than the lot of the living. Yes, beloved. And the spirit of you who have died in righteousness will live. And your spirits will rejoice and be glad and the memory of them will remain in front of the great one for all the generations of eternity. Therefore, do not fear their abuse. Do not fear their abuse, beloved. I'm going, I'm following these books and trying to make sure that I find the next verse where I want to finish. Verse, chapter 104, verse one, I swear to you, you righteous, that in heaven the angels remember you for good in front of the glory of the great one, and that your names are written down in front of the glory of the great one. Yes, beloved, in the book of life, be hopeful. Let your spirits be anchored in the truth. For you were formerly put to shame through evils and afflictions, but now you will shine like the lights of heaven and will be seen and the gate of heaven will be open to you and persevere in your cry for judgment and it will appear to you for justice will be exacted from the rulers of all your, for all your distress and from all those who helped those who plundered you. Be hopeful. And do not abandon your hope, for you will have great joy like the angels of heaven. What will you have to do? You will, have, you will not have to hide on the day of the great judgment, nor will you be found to be sinners. The eternal judgment will be upon you for all the generations of eternity. And now do not be afraid, you righteous, when you see the sinners growing strong and prospering in their desires, and do not be associated with them, but keep far away from their wrongdoing, for you will be the associates of the host of heaven. Yes, beloved. Yes. This is a word. It was from the book of Enoch. I was reading from my book and trying to follow their book, but I'm going to go into the book of Baruch now. I'm going to go into chapter 44, starting at the eighth verse. For if you endure and purse, I'm sorry, I'm starting at the seventh verse, book of second Baruch. Chapter 44, I'm starting at the seventh verse. For if you endure and persevere in his fear and do not forget his Torah, 
the times shall change over you for good. And ye shall see the consolation of Zion. Because whatsoever now is nothing, but that which shall be is very great. For everything that is corruptible shall pass away, and everything that dies shall depart, and all the present time shall be forgotten. Nor shall there be any remembrance of the present time, which is defiled with evil. I'm going to skip down to the 11th verse. I'm going to keep going. For that which runs now runs unto vanity, and that which prospers shall quickly fall and be humiliated. For that which is to be shall be the object of desire. And for that which comes afterwards shall we hope. For it is a time which passes not away. Let me go into that a little bit. For everything that is corruptible shall pass away. Be encouraged, beloved. Just as we see the young become the old, the new become the old. And worn and torn with time. There is going to come a time when this world passes away. We have been given the examples of it. The world keeps us so distracted that the Most High shows us now that everything that is shall pass away, but there is coming a day that has no end. There is coming a shadowless day, a day when evil has no power and it shall be judged. And all their acts shall testify against them to condemn them of their crime. And the hour comes which abides forever and the new world comes which does not turn to corruption. Those who depart to its blessedness and has no mercy on those who depart to torment and leads not to perdition those who live in it. Yes, beloved. I want to take, I'm going to chapter 40. I'm just going to read now. For corruption shall take those that belong to it and life those that belong to it. Yes, the corruption, those things, those who are corrupted and who joy in it shall be possessed by corruption. And those who love life shall be taken into life. I want to read what the aspect, yes. I'm in 2nd Baruch, chapter 51. I'm going to start at the first verse and just read, beloved. I've read this before, but this is for those who need encouraging. I received certain messages and this word comes from on high. I'm in second Baruch starting at chapter 51. And it shall come to pass when that appointed day has gone by that then shall the aspect of those who are condemned be afterwards changed and the glory of those who are justified. For the aspect of those who now act wickedly shall become worse than it is, as they shall suffer torment. Also, as for the glory of those who have now been justified in my Torah, who have had understanding in their life, and who have planted in their heart the root of wisdom, then their splendor shall be glorified in changes, Yes, beloved, we shall experience changes, just like we experience changes in this temporary world, in this carnal physical world, where everything ages, where things grow old, where they rust and die away. When we get to that everlasting day, to that shadowless life, changes shall come there. That's when the separating occurs. Yes, yes. Also, as for the glory of those who have now been justified in my Torah, 
who have had understanding in their life and have planted in their heart the root of wisdom, then their splendor shall be glorified in changes and the form of their face shall be turned into the light of their beauty that they may be able to acquire and receive the world which does not die, which is then promised to them. For over this above all shall those who come then lament that they have rejected my Torah. Stop their ears that they might not hear wisdom or receive understanding. When therefore they see those over whom they are now exalted, but who shall then be exalted and glorified more than they, they shall respectfully be transformed, the latter into the splendor of angels, and the former shall yet more waste away in wonder at the visions and in the beholding of the forms. For they shall first behold and afterwards depart to be tormented. They shall see your reward, just as we shall witness the sinner's reward. The sinners shall witness the reward of the chosen ones below. I'm going down to verse nine and get ready to finish. And time shall no longer age them. For in the heights of that world, they shall dwell and they shall be made like unto the angels and be made equal to the stars and they shall be changed into every form they desire from beauty into loveliness and from light into the splendor of glory. For there shall be spread before them the extents of paradise. Yes, beloved, that place that Adam and Eve were expelled from, we shall enter in if we do not grow weary and faint. Yes, yes. And there shall be shown to them the beauty of the majesty of the living creatures which are beneath the throne and all the armies of the angels who are now held fast by my word, lest they should appear and are held fast by a command that they may stand in their places to the advent, advent come. Moreover, there shall be an excellency in the righteous surpassing that in the angels. Yes, beloved, there is a reward coming. I had a vision once. In the vision, I was walking down this road. It was an earthen road and I came upon this great wall of stone, thick and high, but the stone opened up like a doorway and the light was so bright and brilliant that it was blinding. And as I spoke to the most high, I wanted to see and I asked him, let me see, let me see. And my eyes, my vision adjusted. And as I walked into that open doorway where the stone wall gave way to a door, I could see a mountain and on that mountain, I saw beings, I knew the knowing came and I knew they were people being led by being big and great, but the people weren't people the way we think of people. They were filled with so much light. I couldn't make out the details of their faces or of their bodies. They were illuminated and covered with light and they were going up on this journey being led by a glorious spirit. And when I looked, I saw this great and beautiful city of gold. It was suspended in air, but it was going down and I knew it was the new Jerusalem that the Most High had prepared for us. Even in that vision, when I did not understand everything, when I first saw it, because when the Most High gives us knowledge and wisdom and revelation, he gives it in measure. And there are times when he can give the vision before it comes to pass where he explains it to us. 
He was showing the reward, the beginning, the transition of the blessed ones, those who had passed on. And they were beings of light. They were, I got up on them. I ran over to one trying to see detail, but it was such glorious light that all I could see was their forms of light following this great being that was leading them up this high mountain road. Beloved, let that soul be anchored in hope. Don't give up because of sinners. Do not be discouraged. The promises are true. And even your prayers are held in heaven before the throne of the Most High. And all those who commit sins against you, against man, and against those you love, when you testify to the Most High, it is held and recorded by the angels on the tablets of heaven. And when those sinners who have done that evil come before his throne, those prayers go up as a testament to their crime. Know this for a certainty. And when the days come that iniquity is removed and time is no more, the angels shall rejoice. Yes, beloved, yes. There is more that I wanted to share, but I think the time to end this has come for you to be encouraged and for you to know. These days were written in the days of Enoch. These days are spoken of in the book of Revelations and throughout the Testaments, be they old or new, for you to be encouraged and for you to know. You are not alone. And that seal, that spiritual seal of the most high is upon you. Let it rain down upon you, beloved, and keep you. And now, may the most high bless you and keep you. May he guide you in all your ways. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, as we glorify, Yahuwah, our Adonai, our El Elyon, and thank him for the Ruach HaKadosh that leads us in his paths of righteousness, teaching us, growing us, having mercy upon our sins. For we are sinners, Father, and your great binding mercy be upon us. Thank you. We say thank you, Father, for all you have, are, and shall do. Thank you for being, cleansing us, teaching us. We give you praise. Again, we say, amen. Beloved, a word. Yes. Shalom. <laughs>